Hello and welcome back to this museum where today we're taking inspiration from our friends across the pond and we are straight piping the Ford GT. How cool is that? This is going to sound epic. And now it already yeah. sounds good, bear in mind, but it's just going to sound a whole lot better. Yes, yes. There's definitely room for improvement with this one. Now, as you guys may know, over the course of the four years of ownership with this car, it started on its original exhaust, which failed. Tim then switched that to the US spec Akrapovic whilst he was on his US tour, and that then failed. That was then switched for an EU Akrapovic exhaust as we couldn't get hold of a US one, which failed. And we're now on a stock EU updated 2022 exhaust. And that just isn't really good enough. So we've been speaking to our friends at Quicksilver who provided the exhaust for the glorious Clio V6. And they're going to build one for us. And we're going, well, we'll save all of the details when we get there and speak to them. But safe to say, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Now, if we come back here, we actually have the EU spec Akrapovic exhaust here, which we're going to take with us for the guys to kind of work with in terms of measurements of where things connect up and where they come out. Everything else in between is going to be quite different. As I'm sure you can imagine, there's going to be no box whatsoever. So I think really, without further ado, it's time for us to get this loaded up into the Skoda and get on the road. Although that said, before we do, Brad, Skoda, I've just mentioned it. Yeah. We've been living with this for quite some time. Oh, you've been living with this for quite some time now. Obviously it has done a number of team adventures, but this has basically been your daily driver since it's arrived. Yeah, I think we should have a quick update on this, just to run through mileage that's been done in it. Yeah. I don't know exactly how much was me and how much was Tim and yourself, but- But speaking of mileage, there's, there's a cool story about there is. that. Should we um, have a quick swap over? And, yeah, let me and come see. and grab that off you and let's walk around this. So, Skoda time, like we've said, we've been living with this for quite some time now. What's it like? It's great. This, I don't want to say it's the best car in the world because that's such a generic thing to say, but I absolutely love this thing. It's comfortable, it's practical, it looks good. I know the spec was obviously kind of my doing, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the color. It's absolutely filthy, but it just does everything you could want a car of this kind to do. And you know what? When you put it down a B road, it doesn't like, not fall apart in literal sense, but you don't lose the drivability of it. It no, does it so, so well. The, I mean, the first time I drove it down a country lane and, and give it some beans, shall we say, I think I got out of it and my instant response was, I see why the police use these because you're yep. not getting away from one. If, if someone wants to, to keep with you in one of these, they're gonna make it happen. Yep, I, I'm obsessed with it. I think it's great. I mean, genuinely, I've been using it every single day. The Abaf in the last, so we've had this for about three months now, just over three months. Yeah, I think it arrived 19th of October. Around then, around. I think around we posted the video a week later or so, something yep. like that. I've used the Abaf maybe three times in the last three months. I, I which did actually for me has been great because it's been you nice forgot to- you've got that? <laughs> Almost. That's just over there on the quick jacks at the it moment. Is. It ready is for ready for its service. Uh, yeah, ready for its service, which you've been preparing. So fair play. Brad is doing more mechanicals. But yeah, this thing for over winter, this has been perfect. Mileage, if you come around, this is quite fun. When it was delivered, it was brand new. It was on 54 miles, if I remember correctly. Now, if I just pop the ignition on and back off, hopefully it comes up and tells us. Let's see. There we go. 7,054 miles. So since this was delivered as to right now which to be honest has just involved a run to whoops and back we've done exactly seven thousand miles that is i which, mean we couldn't have planned that better. It's, it's really nerdy and quite fun but i just love this thing to be able to just jump in stick the heated seats on stick the massage seats on and just cruise wherever you need yeah. to go at 55 miles per gallon which yeah. is brilliant i mean i did a run up to manchester recently with my dad and sat at 70 the whole way up there and we'd averaged, I think, 54.5 And you just can't MPG. ask more of that. And again, I, I know what you were saying back at the beginning. It's, it's just a great all-rounder. I think it's a good way yeah. to put it. It's economical, it's comfortable, it's practical. It's still very sporty. It feels great down a B road. The turn-in for a diesel is amazing. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely filthy. I mean, we've literally, let me just put this back down. I mean, yeah. Very recently had to give number plate a, a wipe down because obviously in the winter <laughs> the car gets covered. This is meant to be orange. It is now brown. Yeah. And your number plates have to be kept. So clear. we have Viola Brown going on over there and at the Phoenix moment. Phoenix Brown. And Phoenix Brown. <laughs> so a lot of brown cars in this museum. But I mean, literally just the amount of space. Rear seats folded now. 
I've just had, I think, three sets of oars in here just picked up from whoops for various family members and all that sort of stuff. We've got another exhaust in there, which is actually from my car, but not the one on the car, another one I have, because we're gonna ask some questions at Quicksilver and just find out a little bit more about that and who knows. Can um, you make that thing any noise here is basically what yeah. you're getting at. It's standard at the moment, so who knows? I mean, it makes enough noise. It's standard, but it is basically still straight through. Oh, I guess we can have a look at this in a bit with the yeah, guys. Pretty it, much. it is basically straight through. Yeah. I so, think we should do another swap around. I think we should. We'll in fact, let's, that. Let's do that right now, because I oh, think, a bit oh dear, sorry. I think it's time for us to load that into here, get on the road to Quicksilver, because rumor has it, there may be a guest down there as well. And maybe some cars. And maybe some cars, so. That sounds fun. And I've heard there might be some OPF removals and decats and stuff going on and various test pipes in the works. So um, yeah, V12s, V8s. Should we go? V6, let's go. Okay, here we go. So you can't see us currently. You probably can just about now. Yep, I think we're probably just coming to shot. Will the box fit in the Skoda? Now, yes, we could take the van, but we use the van quite a lot. And the, I, 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 it's been a long no, time since I've been in this. I think we should twist it around I think 90 it, degrees. I agree, I agree. Okay, so that's not going to close at the moment with that. So let's see if we can pull it a bit well, further I think it will in. go up a little bit on the back seat. Yep. Yeah, we've used the van quite a lot, so we decided for this. Let's bring the Skoda out, give it another run. As we've said, you use this basically daily, so I haven't seen it in quite some time. So yeah, I want to ride out in it and maybe have a drive. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not stopping. <laughs> As we said, capacious. We now have... Yeah, okay, if That's we... a big word from if, me. That is a big word. <laughs> if we took the exhaust out of the box, we'd be... It'll be fine, it would just fit in Oh there. yeah, of course. Hence, mine was just the bubble wrap. It'd be, it's yeah. a lot easier, but it's in a box. We might as well leave it in a box. Successful, I think. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Oh, yeah, other way, that way. So, we are making steady progress on the way to Quicksilver, and we have found an FF looking absolutely lovely just up ahead there. Let's um, come up here and go around it, I think, so we can go and have a better look from the side. Hopefully, it doesn't get lost behind the, uh, the Tucson. Hopefully, not. Well, there we go. We've got yeah, there. Is, we is that, go. Is it dark red? It is. I don't, I'm not entirely certain of the color, but. It's uh, oh, looking it's lovely. Nice oh, me. with the uh, with the tan interior. Yes. Oh, good spec. Yes, good, good spec, spec indeed. We're making but, some nice progress though. Just cruising around the M25. We're not going to say the the usual traffic thing because no, so don't. far, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, this car for this sort of journey is brilliant. I've got my massage seat on. I've got my heated seat on. Um, I'm in individual right now, which currently is set up with normal. Everything basically. Oh, that's reset since I've last used it. That's a bit weird. Um, normally is in super, super comfort with, oh, there we go. It's updated. Normal steering, eco drive, because fuel economy is great. Uh, normal engine sound, adaptive cruise control and eco, normal light assistance and air conditioning in eco, which just means eco and as comfortable as possible for a journey like this. Speaking of which, let's crack on and we'll join you guys at Quicksilver unless we see any more Lamborghinis. Okay, so we haven't spotted another Ferrari or Lambo, but there is a McLaren 600 LT going on up there. Is that on a test drive maybe? It's on trade plate, so it's either on a test drive or being moved between dealerships or there something. Oh, there we go. I think we're going to go past it. Is that a spider as well? Oh, it is, and he's got the roof Oh, it down. is. Good lad. That's quite nice. nice. Yeah. Nice pick. Just one guy in it, so I don't think it's a test drive. That's probably being moved between dealership and Somewhere. service, something like that. Anyway. Onto Quicksilver. Jump ahead and we have arrived at Quicksilver. We've got some interesting cars to look at. The Skoda is here, probably even dirtier. And we have a Paul Wallace. We said there was a guest coming and there's a guest here, but he's already leaving. I mean, you come to Quicksilver and you're filming my car, which doesn't have Quicksilver. That's fine, we'll just pretend <laughs> that. But it has got some nice Motec goodies. Yes, this is a, a sweet daily in terms of easy to drive, Apple CarPlay. You just get in and go, right? Yeah, it looks good. The best thing. Cool, yeah. good to see you, mate. Good to see you. We'll catch up soon. See you later. Off Paul goes. Anyway, I think we need to head inside and talk all things exhaust and figure out what we're doing with the Quicksilver, well, not the Quicksilver, what we're going to do with Quicksilver for the Ford GT. Off goes the GTI. We're now inside the workshops here at Quicksilver, joined by Ollie. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the channel again. You've done me dirty, you brought down a... We've brought down something that isn't your product, I appreciate, but obviously <laughs> this is for the purposes of you guys templating something for us. Naturally, we've had a few conversations about the system, 
we've had a few failures with these and obviously we're looking to do something that's going to prevent that happening in future what, what what why don't you tell us what we're going to be achieving because i'm sure you could explain it better than i could i'll do my best so our process now at this stage this very early stage of developing a new product yeah. is to learn from this this is not a bad exhaust these guys are the coca-cola of the exhaust world for sure and um we're certainly not here to put the boot into anybody mm -hmm. this is a product which is beautifully made but i'm sure has been hampered by eu legislation emissions uh, yeah emissions stuff. yeah you know, noise when, regulations and exactly that and i think when when a manufacturer approached by an OEM to do something as OEM tier one supply, you, you, you're given basically what's, what's called a DFM or a design for manufacturer where you'll go through, the manufacturer will specify a decibel level. Okay. You've got to hit it. You're not there to question it. You just got to do it. Yep. And um, I think this is why we've ended up with these huge silencers, mm -hmm. which I think you've had more than one exhaust. Yeah. Baffles or yeah, the we had the, so the original US, uh, the EU spec, sorry, factory exhaust failed the baffles and then we've had the US and EU yeah. Acra exhausts fail in a very similar fashion. Yeah. So our our first steps, and this is this is basically going in as a full scale Quicksilver development, I appreciate yep. today, you're just dropping the system off. I, yes. I almost wish we were down at the factory so I could I could yeah. show you some of the real cool stuff and the laser scanners and all the rest of it. Maybe that's a video for another time. Mm -hmm. But as as it stands basically what we're gonna do is learn from this system. So Firstly, we can see it's got a lot of heat shielding on it. Secondly, yeah. we can see where it's actually been blowing from the sheet silencer. Yeah. Um, so our, our plan is to actually get some of this cladding off, have a look at where it's going. We'll probe it internally, and then basically we'll use this for its bracketry points to get our start finish points. Yeah. At that point, I think I'm not jumping the gun here by saying that our brief is basically, we're gonna go for an Incan LX pipe on the back, zero silencing. Larry as hell. I have said straight pipe, but there you go. Ollie has just revealed to you guys we are going in canal with the material for this, which is, it's pretty much the daddy of exhaust material, right? Yeah, it's, it's got some really interesting kind of load bearing and stress qualities mm -hmm. to it. Traditionally, Quicksilver are not big manufacturers in Inconel. We, okay. we, we often do stainless titanium or a mixture of the two, which is our signature, which is, which yep. is a Titan. Um, Inconel, we, we tend to use for anything uh, a Ferrari F430 is a really good example. You've okay. got tailpipes which have no, they don't have a bracket on them like this. You, you, mm -hmm. You've basically got a, a flange which acts as a load bearing joint with a 90 degree okay. bend. That bend from factory stresses and it yeah. breeds up and down and it fractures. And so we would use Inconel for that. Anything that's gonna have to be load bearing, take exceptional temperature, it's very good at resisting heat. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of taking a step back towards Inconel for this. Okay. We're fairly holistic developers here. We don't yep. we don't just sort of try and go with a brief because that's what Quicksilver do. It's yep. um, we kind of look at what's right for the car, what's the right choice of material, and then we'll go from there. So I think that's the brief in canal straight pipe. Go for a nice tube thickness on the material, and we'll just try and get a really nice mixing of gases and try and make it sound more like the sort of robust six cylinder it is. Yeah, and um, again, I'm guessing you saying in canal and the the heat management. I'm guessing mm -hmm. from the amount of heat protection you've seen on this is kind of why you're leaning towards the Inconel side of things on that rather De than titanium? Well, titanium is not very good at, uh, at what we call panting. It, it's okay. um, particularly if you're using it for boxes, which won't be an issue for us, but, but, but titanium is, is strong, uh, but, but not very good at expanding and contracting over okay. countless heat cycles. Yeah. Stainless steel, T304 stainless steel is very good at it. Inconel is even better. Okay. Um, and then in terms of, so you could clearly from OEM, heat management has been an issue on that, on this car. Yeah. We'll learn more because of course, I and again, I don't know, tell me to shut up, I'm jumping the gun here, but the mm. plan is we will bring the car in For here sure. before sure. we fit up as, as is customary. And we're going to strap it up with temperature yeah. gauges and probe its exhaust and find out its secrets. And then we've got 100%. a really nice baseline before we fit up the product kind of what its stock temperatures are versus what it's doing on its yeah. new system. Maybe we need to add or subtract some, some heat management depending on how well it does. Naturally, we're expecting a straight pipe to generate less heat than this on the basis that, that slowing down exhaust gas temperatures with, yeah. with baffling or chambering basically creates more heat. The freer the flow on a turbocharged yeah. car, the quicker you can evacuate those gases from the turbo, the happier the getting engine is. Getting the gases out, getting the heat yeah. out, getting everything out as quickly as possible. That's it. Yeah. So lower, lower exhaust gas temperatures, faster flow, try and get a better mix of gases out of both banks, shed some weight and try and give longevity to the system. I think that's, that's the aim here. I guess we have to ask the question, would we be looking for any power increases along the way or would we expect it to stay about the same? Hard, it's hard to say. And we would, if we were gonna go down that route, I think that the 
primary source of restriction in a GT is going to be its catalyst and its emissions yep. equipment. Um, I don't tend... There's some systems, some catbacks that do make very good gains. Are, mm -hmm. are typically, any system that we're putting onto our own valve control is a, okay. is a good example of that. For example, our OPF back Range Rover SVR exhaust and Defender exhaust make 10 horsepower, 10 foot pounds. Oh, wow. Um, that's mostly on valve restriction. This is not a valve exhaust. No. So... Um, We'd you know, expect to see less from Yeah, I, I'm, we're, we're doing this... Firstly, for sound, also for longevity, because yep. it's kind of solution-based as well for, for any other GT owners that are experiencing similar issues. Yep. Um, if we can get some power out of it at the same time, then Bonus. happy days. Yep. We would want to run that car up on a dyno as a baseline first, so that's kind of a conversation for us to have down the line. For sure. Are we really chasing power, or are we chasing longevity in sound? For sure. Don't know, dynos don't always tell you the full story. No, this is very true. Well, I guess we're going to leave this with you, and as you said, this will be sent off to your factory for various stages of development yep. before the car comes back. For, as you say, final fitment, make sure everything is as it should be before we come and collect the car, probably with Tim at some point in the future, and hear this in all its glory once it's done. But speaking of hearing things, I understand you've got a few development cars laying around that may be in various stages of, what, of development? There's a few, there's a few toys here today. We've got the 992 Turbo. This has been a Quicksilver staple now for, for a number of years. Yep. We have just the, the very latest cars, very latest 2022 cars, they don't make it easy for us, um, have uh, basically they've narrowed the parameter of the valve monitoring on the car. So ah. it used to be these, these have a, again, tell me, gents, if I'm boring you. But no, these, please these, carry on. These have a five pin SVS valve in them, which are only found on the Alpine A110 in this car. They do not have an auto relearn procedure like Acousta. And therefore, if you put them in, and it even detects that the text put the valve in one degree out, the car throws a wobbler. Okay. You used to be able to configure that with Porsche Diagnostic. Now you can't. So now we've had to do the whole thing again and re-engineer a load more tolerance into the valve just for 2022 onwards model year cars. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, they don't make it Shows easy. the levels in which you go to. So you've basically had to make this even more precise. Um, than we've, we've had to, actually, we've had to slacken the tolerance oh, in, okay. in, in, in the valve um, just, just to keep it a little bit happier. Um, it, it, in terms of sound and everything, there was absolutely no difference. But yep. That also means you have to make a taller profile of valve, which means we had to re-engineer all our tooling for the titanium silencer. So wow. um, what we thought would be a very simple swap over <laughs> job, um, which, is, which is what we call a, a quality maturation, uh, has now turned into a full scale redevelopment. So it's back and it's done. And this thing, we can fire it up if you like, if I can find the keys anywhere. But yeah, I think um, the ones that most people are really interested in at the moment, this one seems to be getting the most attention. I was going to say, what I'm looking at here is the new V12 Vantage, which clearly you've done something on what, what, what's happening with this one. Um, this one is kind of two parts that form one product. Um, we've got the 300 cell race catalysts at the front. Ooh. So, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. But they're street legal. It's yep. a Euro 6 cat. They're warranty safe. They don't check, check on a check engine light. You okay. don't have to remap the car. So we delete, we take an 800 cell, yep. delete that, turn it into a 300 cell. That's a Re lot of restriction gone. Yes. Yep. Uh, 86% improvement we've clocked that at. There you um, go. Deleted the secondary cats. Okay. And then put our Titan rear box on it. So it's, um, it's, it's gone from, the, it always had a pleasant tone, but, but um, was just fundamentally a bit muted and lacking a bit of that definition, particularly in the overrun gurgle yeah. and, and high up. And we, we've got it really sort of banshee sounding up from 2K onwards when the valves start to open. And it's, um, we can fire up and hear it. I'll say, um, I think we need to stop talking about this one and, and get this one fired let's up. Let's talk but, more V12, yep. Now you may have noticed there's also a V8 Vantage here as well, which we'll have a look at in a moment, but we're gonna keep you waiting on the V12 because it's how we do things on this museum, right? <laughs> And Ollie happens to have the keys to the Defender, I believe. You wanted a V12, what I'm going to give you is a diesel. Okay, let's have a listen to a diesel. So this has got a system, it's a sound generator system on this one, right? Fundamentally, yeah. We're, yeah. Try, we're trying to, to, actually I was about to swear, I don't think I'm allowed to swear on this channel. We're trying to take a lot of the um, <laughs> B word out of sound generator systems. Traditionally, you have to weld them on, you yep. have to put brackets in them, you don't actually see a tailpipe. This all comes as one bolt-on solution. The gases really do blow out these tailpipes, so okay. a visible tip. Yep. You don't have to have an app, you don't have to cut it all about, you just snap it into the can and off you go. Okay, well, let's take a listen and see how this sounds. Ooh. But straight away, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a little that bit more... That sounds... Um, yeah. That sounds very natural. Yeah, it doesn't. A, you know, you hear a lot of these systems, and I, you know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. They often sound very artificial and very manufactured. That, if I didn't know, I wouldn't know. I'll take that. Thank you very much. That sounds like an engine. Would to you me. want to come and see the party piece, right? So, 
two taps of this. Completely silent. And then put it back on again. That's fair play, fair play. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd be a real fan of one of those sound generator systems, but that's not offensive. Like we, we tried to straight pipe it. We tried to make it sound like the best diesel we could and it, nothing will stop it. It still sounded like, like a, a diesel. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So at least with this, look, is it, is it a bit of a gimmick? Maybe, but the fact is it works and yeah. this car's got a hell of a lot of road presence. So why not give it the sound to match? And Do it, I mean, yeah, you said, I mean, the, the Skoda Octavia has a, you know, you can put that sport sound on it. And again, a lot of times we're off put by this yeah. pumped in artificial noise, but when you've got a diesel to listen to, actually it makes it really rather pleasant. So I think this is quite a genius solution. Ah, glad you like it. Anyway, V12. V12. <laughs> okay, so we've now got both of them here running. We're still gonna keep you waiting for the V12 but I think we should take a quick listen to the V8 Vantage with this system, which has OPF delete. And yeah, let's hear how this sounds. Those are some loud bangs. That sounds good to me, but I guess without further ado, let's listen to the 12 cylinder one. Now, hopefully you guys will agree, if I can get my earring back, that sounds absolutely nuts and probably as it should have done from factory. So yeah, I think you can see the 4GT exhaust is in the right hand here with the guys at Quicksilver if it's gonna end up sounding anything like these. Right, so I guess it's time to hit the road. Time to jump back in the Skoda, which is- Dirty. It's about <laughs> as dirty as that V12 Vantage. No, this is 10 times worse. That, and that is clean in comparison, but it's still No, I mean dirty. as dirty as the noise. Oh. Okay, oi, oi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> get on the road. Welcome to the M25, where we're currently doing a solid zero miles an hour, as you do. Absolutely brilliant. This is what, is that an M5 there? It is an M5 competition, that's quite nice. Car spotting on the M25 is what we seem to do, um, of course. Anyway, uh, we're making some okay progress. Yes, bit of traffic now. We quickly stopped for a Nando's, as usual, because that's all Tom and myself seem to eat when we go out. Um, but that's about it. Just going to cruise back. We'll do a final little update on the system that Quicksilver we're going to make and the sort of next plans, and then we can go home, I think. We're back. Here we are. Full GT is here, of course, which, as we said, we'll be heading down to the guys at Quicksilver at some point for the final fit up, temperature probes, gas probes, various bits and pieces that, if I'm completely honest, completely over my head. And mine. Like, okay, not the only one. Ollie had a chat with me about my exhaust and he just yep. started going like, this has got the 7.567 thousand uh, 90 degree here. And I was just like, Ollie, I don't know what you're on about. Yeah. <laughs> How can we make it louder? And he gave me some ideas. So yeah, yeah. All, all I know is loud noise, pop, pop, bang, bang. That's what exhaust do, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe not always pop, pop, bang, bang. But so next steps for this. Next steps for this. Well, it's not going anywhere for now, but I guess at some point, Ollie is going to give me a call and say, Tom, we have finished development and we have done as much as we can without the car. It'll then be, I guess, down to us or Tim, depending on when that is to, to get the car down there. So that'll be a nice little run out for the Ford GT possibly. And then, well, and then a couple of days later, we pick it back up. And then crucially you get to hear how it sounds. And it sounds yes. good. Like I said at the start, it does it sounds, sound good. It sounds amazing in standard form on a standard exhaust, on an, a Krapovich exhaust, whatever it is, but what we're doing should make this thing sound insane. But we are straight piping it, DDE style, just full send. Yeah, it's gonna be epic. This is what happens when Tom gets involved and goes, I'll, I'll speak to Quicksilver, don't worry. We'll just remove all boxes, remove everything. If I had my way, we'd be doing a decat as well, if we're completely honest. But we've got as least restriction in that exhaust as possible, made of Inconel, with the bending that should give it a bit of a deeper tone. So it will be slightly different from what we know and in some cases love about the 4GT. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to see how it sounds. And does it, does it change the car? Like will all of a sudden, will it be a different car for Tim driving it now? Who knows? We shall find out. And to clarify, Tim does know everything about this. He is very on board of what, what the plan is. Yes. It's not like we've just gone, we're gonna change the exhaust and Tim has no clue, Tim knows. Yes. Although speaking of doing things without Tim knowing, he goes away a lot and we are quite nice to him, aren't we? We've never actually messed with anything in here. 
Hmm. Not, you know, other than moving cars where he doesn't. You know, we've never really pranked him, shall we say? Sounds like an idea. If you have any prank ideas, guys, let us know in the comments. Yeah, leave them in the comments down below. And Tim, don't turn off two minutes ago. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed coming down to Quicksilver with us, hearing what's going to happen with the Ford GT. And I guess for now, until next time.